Three, two, one. They are calling him the Tony Stark of Kitchener, Ontario. All right. I know you guys wanted to see me fly like Iron Man for a long time now, and so have I. But what you need to understand is this is going to be a very expensive and time-consuming project. And what you don't know is we've actually been looking into building some kind of flying machine for almost a year now. Our original designs included building a giant octocopter. And while this would have been technically easier to do, it would be less safe and about three meters in diameter, which makes it completely not like flying like Iron Man whatsoever. So we've opted to use electric ducted fans instead. Now the problem is propeller efficiency goes up with size. So if you have a giant prop, you can produce a lot of thrust. Electric ducted fans are very small, so you lose a lot of potential power from that. But an electric ducted fan is more efficient than an equivalent size propeller. But since they are smaller, that means we're going to need more batteries, which makes it harder because then you have to lift the batteries as well as yourself and the props, and it becomes quite a technical disaster. Technical problems aside, let's try and explain the plan of what we're going to do. Now, like we said before, the biggest thing holding back any kind of flight project is the finances to actually build it. This could cost up to $50,000, which is money we just don't have. So, the plan is to start small and basically create proof of concepts of each individual flying system. And that way, we might be able to attract more sponsors to get the funding we need to be able to buy all the components we need to build this full project. And if you guys want to help support the project too, we also have a Patreon page. There's a link in the description so you can help fund this project. So, what are we going to do? We're going to start by building wrist-mounted EDFs. These will be the control and stabilization flight system part of the Iron Man flight suit. In fact, we've already 3D printed them. Now, we'll be able to do a few fun projects using the, these because basically I have two 7 kilowatt power sources at my fingertips. Um, using the stunt wire system, we'll be able to simulate a flight if I was to only weigh 20 pounds, and we should actually be able to obtain some kind of flight that looks like Iron Man. After we're done testing this, we're going to use motorcycle boots to build the feet jets. From there, assuming we can get more electric ducted fans, we'll be moving on to the best part, and that is the jetpack. The jetpack is what's going to supply the majority of the thrust for the system. I just want to clear something up. I know a lot of the comments on our previous video was, Iron Man's thrust comes from his feet. Well, that might work in the first movie, but that's because it's a movie, and that's CGI, and he has a full exoskeleton which keeps his body rigid. It might be possible to fly like Iron Man in that sense, but in the real world, not so much. What we need is to have the thrust above the center of gravity, because otherwise you're not going to be very stable. So to prove this, we're going to show you uh, what would happen if you strapped rockets to your feet using this little tuxedo man and some mini bottle rockets. For more information about why you can't fly like this, I've posted an a infographic on my Facebook page. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more updates between videos on this project. But let's try launching this guy. Don't try this at home. Fatality. Anyways, to sum it up, <laughs> If you have all the thrust at your feet, it's like trying to balance a pencil. If you try and push up, you're just going to start flipping and die in a big ball of fire. As opposed to having the thrust above you, like say a helicopter, you have a very stable flight. Take a look at this video. So with that in mind, you have to kind of imagine that the flight system we're looking to build is kind of be more like uh, in Inspector Gadget Go Go Helicopter. Did I say that? Go Go Gadget? So you have to imagine what we're trying to build is more like a Go Go Gadget Helicopter. Go Go Gadget Copter! But we're going to make it a bit more compact, have the jets located basically off the shoulders, plus the hands and the feet. 
So while ducted fans are more efficient than equivalent size props, because they're so small, that means you need to put a lot more power into them. And what that means is we need more batteries to power the EDFs, and because we have the added weight of the batteries, we need more EDFs. And then we need more batteries to power those EDFs, and more EDFs to lift those batteries. And more batteries to power those EDFs to lift the batteries that you're using to lift yourself. We'd need about 20 EDFs to fly with a reasonable amount of extra thrust to make sure we don't crash and die. But, if we can get larger EDFs, we won't need as many, because like I said, prop efficiency goes up with size. So even if we get a, an EDF that's only a few inches bigger, it can almost be double the thrust output. So as I've mentioned before, we've designed and 3D printed the first prototype of our arm-mounted stabilizer system for the Iron Man flight project. Now we've revised the design a little bit and we're in the process of 3D printing two more. And once we have two of these guys made, we're going to be able to do the first test using the stunt wire system. But before then, we had some fun with this.